Gold medal about to be decided here in the visually impaired two and three combined gold medal match here. Daniele Piran of Italy on target number two up against Adrian Arales of Spain on target number one. Saw a thrilling bronze medal match. What is going to transpire in the gold? Interesting that we both sucks. saw both archers in the uh, the bronze medal match shooting compound bows, both archers in this gold medal match shooting recurve bows over the 30 meter distance, 80 centimeter target faces. Um, archers can choose to shoot either bow style in the visually impaired categories. Well, both uh, archers' sighters drifting off to the left. Uh, Piran looks like he's made a, a quicker adjustment here going into the eight and uh, finishes off with another eight. So that needs to be matched by Oralis to uh, share the set points. Any more and he will get both of them. An opportunity here for the Spaniard. Five. But he's gone further left there, and uh, Piran takes the first two set points. You mentioned about the speed of the bronze medal match. This one's pretty quick as well. Yeah, I'm fascinated by two things uh, from Orajes after that first uh, set. Um, firstly, okay, he's shooting a recurve bow, but he's really the first archer we've seen in this arena this morning, a visually impaired archer, with a strong follow through. Now, I mean, it's obviously worked, he's got this far, but it seems a little risky to me to be having the bow swinging around when your sight is next to you and it's a physical object that's not attached. You know, a knock on that um, you know, could be quite catastrophic. I, I have noticed that he is pinning his um, his his um, his stand down. He's he's weighting it down with an elastic band or a or a tense band down the middle, which could be the reason for that. It needs to be more securing faces. It's not because uh, you know archers they can uh, let it fling a bit, let the let the let the bow go a little bit, and it can uh, you know impact the um, impact the sight. The second thing is uh, his sight, his tactile sight, um, it doesn't have a, a, a very pointy pin like most of the ones we've seen. It's got a kind of ball, and he's resting that ball between two knuckles. You know, it's it's no different when we talk about able-bodied archery and using uh, crosshairs or a dot or a ring in your sight picture. He's opted to use, rather than a, a, a kind of thin pin, he's using a ball and he's pressing um, more of his hand against that to try and get a, a bigger picture. Uh, it's, it's, it's cool to see the differences, the nuances um, between the approach from these visually impaired archers. Working better for Piran at the moment. Two set points to nil up. So Arales get this uh, second set underway and you get to see that tactile aid. He's had to reset here as the uh, tip of the arrow came off the rest bit of time pressure on him six seven. Six, seven. Seven, 
Uh, just looking a lot more settled, Piran. Doesn't give away much in uh, facial expressions. Oh, what a great finish from Morales for a 22. There's some pressure now on Piran. A 7 to draw in this set and share the points. <laughs> what a finish in that set from Piran to go 4 0 up. He had some pressure on him there, but uh, stood up to it. And it goes 4 0 up in set points and looking very strong indeed. Chris, he doesn't give very much economic. away, does he? Very economical in his, in his shooting um, style. Quite a dead release, quite a, a clean release, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I think. I think you know um, there are many Italian archers who have who have succeeded with a similar kind of style. Uh, Marco Galeazzo, uh, Athens 2004 Olympic champion, also had quite a, a static dead release. There's also the famous Frangili, whose release was uh, the most static of, of, of all humanity until until he came along. Um, I think it's I think it's really really nice to see two archers um, in the visually impaired category who've clearly worked a lot on their form and um, worked a lot on, on being comfortable and consistent with the recurve bow. Um, theoretically, compound bow, uh, more efficient, more accurate than a recurve bow. These guys have chosen the recurve and, and as evidenced by the results in this competition, they've outshot their, their compatriots or their, their competitors. So if traditionally the, the compound bow is the easier um, device to use, what, why select a recurve bow? What's the reason? I mean, it's a wonderful question, Karim. Um, over 30 <laughs> meters. Uh, with the limitations on the compound that you have for this category and draw weight, um, are you going to see the benefits of a compound bow? Um, it, it, why it's more accurate? No. One of the one of the, um, uh, the 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 big advantages for compound archers in able body competition is obviously the telescopic sights. Uh, it doesn't apply here. Um, but the big nuance actually is in the way they release these recurve archers seven, uh, shooting seven. with the fingers. Their, their nuances are going to be on the left and the right because the string releases flapping to the left and the right, which actually is where a lot of their, um, seven, uh, seven. their left and right issues are going to be because of the tactile sight. It's going to be more difficult to, to understand pressure on the hand than it is location uh, vertically. The compounds, um, your, your, your bow built-in um, uh, difficulties are more often going to come from the ups and downs because it's a release aid on the string rather than the fingers. So it adds another plane of, 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 um, of variable in. Um, so I'm not sure how much they thought about that, but I wouldn't be surprised if it would be easier to shoot a, a recurve with a, with a tactile sight. There we go. Well, one thing is for sure, Oralis has put himself in a position here where he can seven, put this seven. away, and he has just done that. There is no way Piran can match up to the 23 that Oralis has shot, so Oralis has seven. got himself back into the match. It wasn't a bad set from uh, Piran, but uh, it does mean that uh, Oralis is on the scoreboard, still trailing by four set points to two, but... Uh, Another quick set, Chris, and uh, Aralis really looked very strong there. 7-9-7. Seven, seven. That was me yapping away, and, and, and suddenly the set was over. Um, fantastic comeback. You know, we talked about momentum. Um, Aralis really has an opportunity to take that momentum, to steal that momentum. His groups in the first sets were excellent. He was just in the wrong place. We didn't see him adjust his sight. He may have done. Um, and if he has, uh, his, his pure, pure grouping has been better all the way through in this match um, but at the end of the day it's not about grouping grouping doesn't win you the match doesn't win you points uh, and Peran still has the advantage well, I took a very quick look back across some of those shots and it was a quick look back because they were shooting super fast themselves 
But uh, as Chris Wells, our expert, says that uh, Daniel Piran of Italy is still in the box seat. He leads four set points to two against Adrian Orales of Spain in this VI two and three combined gold medal match. It will be the Spaniard who will shoot first in the fourth set and he needs to perform at that same standard uh, to draw level. Time for the fourth set in this uh, gold medal match between Piran and Orales. Orales has fought back in the third to get himself on the scoreboard, but still trails by four set points to two and will shoot first in the fourth. Four, quattro. Oh, that's probably recognized as an opportunity for Piran. Eight, otto economical process as Chris put it working again for Piran Seven. well this is a critical area to take some pressure off for his last one what a shot it was as well into the 10 there's some serious pressure now on Aralis. If you're feeling the pressure here. Seven. Another seven. So gold is available for Piran if he hits the target. Anything hitting the target, but it's a seven. And a solid performance from Piran in that fourth set means he has taken the gold medal here against Adrian Orales by six set points to two. It was a strong uh, third set from Orales, uh, but uh, Daniele Piran came right back in the fourth set and an amazing for the shooting for a 25 to take gold here at the Euro. Para Archery Championships of 2022.